Today we're looking into addition polymers, which are more commonly known as plastics, and without which modern life simply would not exist, not as we know it. Polymers are just long chain molecules. They're made up from much smaller molecules. Each of the little small molecules or units that we use to make a polymer is known as a monomer. And in the case of addition polymerization, our monomers are alkenes. And we can link thousands, tens of thousands of monomers and alkenes together to make these really long chain fibers and plastics. Many of the everyday plastics we know, such as polyethene, polyvinyl chloride, PVC, or polypropene, are examples of addition polymers. So in this video, we are going to look at how we draw out sections of polymers, how we can recognize a repeat unit, and we're going to look into how we can take a repeat unit and use it to go backwards and figure out the monomer that was used to make that polymer. So let's start with a polymer that we should all be familiar with, polyethene. So naming polymers is very straightforward. We just write poly brackets and then the name of the monomer that we actually used. So polyethene, unsurprisingly, is made up of a number of ethene units. Now, as I said, each polymer chain and there are going to be hundreds of thousands of polymer chains in a section of a plastic or your plastic bag, your polythene bag. Each chain is made up of thousands, if not tens of thousands of monomers. And we are not going to draw them all out. We're just going to draw out a section. So if our monomer is ethene, so there's my ethene. We can represent the fact that we have got an awful lot of them by using the letter N. So N, unspecified but very many ethenes, can be used to make polyethene. And we can draw out a section of polyethene. Let's put my hydrogens in. And this is just a very small section of a very large molecule. So the N goes after the square brackets. Um, I like to say when I'm teaching at GCSE, the N stands for it goes on and on and on. Now, I have got here a section of my polyethene polymer, and I have drawn out two repeat units. So a repeat unit is essentially just the monomer without the double bond. I have also got hanging bonds to show that this is just a small section of my polymer chain, and they should go through the square brackets. If I were to draw out just a single repeat unit of polythene, or polyethene as it more correctly termed, it would look like so. So one repeat unit relates back to one monomer, hanging bonds, which are nice and long, square brackets, and the N. It goes on and on and on. So that's polyethene. Another one that we should be familiar with is PVC, or polyvinyl chloride. Polyvinyl chloride is the old-fashioned name for what we probably now call polychloroethene. The monomer is chloroethene. We've got one chlorine atom replacing the hydrogen. And if I have lots of those, I can make or draw out a section of my polymer, PVC. So again, hanging bonds, square brackets, and the N. Note that the chlorine was on the first carbon below, and that is where I have placed it within my repeat unit. Now, we can make polymers using more than one monomer, and that 
is called a copolymer. So for example, let's say that my two monomers are ethene and let's go for let's put some bromines in. So this molecule here would be 1,1-dibromoethene. If I were to draw out a section of the repeat unit, it would look like so. This repeat unit has four carbons in it, and then the hanging bonds. Hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. That corresponds to the ethene monomer, and then to the bromine monomer, it would look like so. So that's that one there. And square brackets and an N to finish off. We might also be asked to draw out a section of polymer or the repeat unit skeletally. We need to be very careful to get the right number of carbon atoms and our hanging bonds. So if I were to do it for this repeat unit here, I've got four carbon atoms in my repeat unit. So one, two, three, four, and then my hanging bond. Hydrogen are not shown in the skeletal formula, but bromine are, and they're going to be on the fourth carbon. So one, two, three, four, shorter bond to the bromine. Both bromines are coming off the same carbon atom. And then I would want my square brackets and my n. So it's nice and clear once again that I've got hanging bonds. In this particular example, these don't indicate carbon atoms, they indicate the hanging bond to the next carbon atom outside of my repeat unit. Now, as you've probably guessed, at A level they are not going to ask you to draw out a repeat unit of something simple like polyethene or polyvinyl chloride. So let's have a look at a more complicated example, polypent2ene. What would the repeat unit for this polymer look like? Well, we always start with the monomer. So monomer is pent2ene. So that's five carbons and the double bond starts on the second carbon. So one, two, three, four, five. Skeletally, it would look like so in terms of drawing it out with a full displayed formula. We've got the double bond starting on the second carbon. And if it's the full displayed formula, then we have to put in all of the hydrogen atoms, making sure that each carbon is making four bonds. So how do I turn that particular monomer into a polymer? Well, the first trick is to redraw it so it looks like ethene, because that makes life much more simple. In which case, ethene, carbon, double bond, carbon. I am now going to look at this carbon here. It has a hydrogen below and CH3, a methyl group above. And now let's have a look at the second carbon. It's got a hydrogen above and it's got C2, CH2, CH3, C2H5 below. Now it looks like ethene, it is much more straightforward to draw my repeat unit. So I'm going to indicate that I have lots of them, brackets and an N, and my repeat unit has got two carbon atoms. It has hanging bonds. We have got CH3 above, hydrogen below, second carbon, hydrogen above, CH2, CH3 below. And then finishing off with square brackets, um, not quite so clear, and an N, something like that would work very nicely. If I were drawing this out skeletally as my repeat unit, then I've got one, two, okay. First carbon, I have got a CH3 group. And the second carbon, 
I have got CH2, CH3, so it's going to look something like that. I would put in my brackets and an N, and I've actually got a line too far, so I need to get rid of that. That is what the repeat unit for this particular polymer would look like. My second nasty example. What would the repeat unit of polymethylmethacrylate look like? Um, this polymer is more commonly known as Perspex. And if this came up in an A-level exam, they would give you the monomer, but they'd probably give it to you in a really nasty way. They might draw it out skeletally, looking like so. So our first job is to turn that into something that we can make some sense of. So I can see that I've got carbon, double bond carbon. Those must be hydrogens. I have got a methyl group. Another carbon, double bond oxygen. So I've got a ketone group, carbonyl group. To an oxygen, so it's actually an ester and then CH3, I can squeeze that in. Once I've figured out what it actually looks like, I'm now going to turn it round so it looks like ethene, in which case I have got C double bond C, hydrogen, hydrogen, CH3 above, and C double bond O, O, CH3 below. Now I've got a monomer that I can actually work with. So, an unspecified but very large number of those would form a repeat unit. Carbon, carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, CH3, C double bond O, O, CH3. Now, it's very common for students to draw it out like that and then walk away from their answer. Make sure that you've always got your hanging bonds in and they're nice and long. And then the square brackets and the N. What would that look like skeletally? Not very nice, to be honest. Uh, hanging bond carbon, carbon, hanging bond, methyl group, and... Double bond O, O. And once again, square brackets and an N. The second type of question we're going to see is where we're given the repeat unit and asked to draw a monomer. So let's start with this here. It's very straightforward. All we need to do is identify where our polymer starts to repeat itself and they usually draw out two or three repeat units. And often they're quite lazy, they don't put in the square brackets in the end. But I'm hoping that we can see that this is the unit that is repeated. So I've identified one repeat unit. So in order to turn that into a monomer, all I need to do is make it an alkene. So it would be carbon double bond carbon, hydrogen, benzene ring, hydrogen, hydrogen. It's as simple as that. If it's a copolymer, then that's usually what we see happening when it looks a little bit confusing. So for example, Let's start with um, C2H5, hydrogen, hydrogen, CH3. Often with a copolymer, the two monomers are very similar. Again, it's a strategy to confuse you, or if you're going very fast, just to trip you up in the exam. Most mistakes, most marks are lost through silly errors. So when I look at this, I'm hoping that we can see that what I've got here 
is, there's my repeat unit, but it's not one monomer. I know that because I've got four carbons in it, not two in my repeat unit. So this must be a copolymer, and my two monomers must be this molecule here, and then separately this monomer here. Hydrogen, 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 and the methyl group. So we've got butuanine and propene as our two monomers. So the next step is to go back to your textbooks and your notes, make sure you've got some decent notes on this and go practice. There's usually quite a few questions in your textbooks on this. I'm guessing that if you've made it to the end of the video, you're mainly here for the chemistry, in which case you should definitely hit the subscribe button, share with your friends and colleagues. And why not check out our amazing exam resources uh, that we've got at crunchchemistry.co.uk. The link is in the blurb below.